Guys, I didn't even dress up for this video. This is like a crusty white tee. I just turned the lights on. Got a little illustration with me today. And this is going to be super brief. But I, I find it... This is either going to be extremely encouraging or discouraging to you. Depending on how you choose to take this in. As with many things in life. Perspective is everything. Um, where do I start? Um, Gary V once said, um, they, they asked Gary V, why do you give away so much free information? You just, you, you give such high volumes of just million dollar nuggets to anyone who asks and even people who don't ask. You just flood the internet with your expertise and you freely give without asking. And he said something that was so profound to me. And as the years go on since I've heard it, it is deep, it's, it's profoundly inspired me and encouraged me and also helped me to just look myself in the mirror with a little more realism uh, in terms of like where my heart is at. It's a good heart check for me. But he said, the reason I give away all of my content for free is because I started realizing that no one listens. What he was saying in that moment was that every time he shares information, whether people pay for it or not, they don't listen because the truth hurts. The truth can be painful because in light of the truth, you have to respond. There's a difference between living your life naive or ignorant, you have an excuse. I don't know. But when you know, this light's being real funky right now, messing up my, my flow. But when you know the truth, you have an obligation to respond. And the way that you respond reflects where your heart is at in that moment. And I feel that it doesn't matter the age we all struggle in this vital moment where once we receive truth and we're challenged to do something that we know is painful, long suffering, takes time, isn't express, isn't right on your doorstep, isn't instantly transformative, we run away. Cause we're in the now generation. And it's not even a generational thing. We're always selfish. We always want it now. We always want the express route. We don't like pain. And so it was profound that he said that because here's a multi, 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 multi millionaire saying, hey, I've talked to everybody. Nobody listens. They hear it. They understand it. But when they hear the truth on how to grow a business, how to have discipline, how to have empathy for other people, how to build character, most people don't actually want to do it. It's too much. For whatever reason, everybody's got their reasons. They choose in that moment that to look in the mirror and say, okay, the truth has been revealed to me. And newsflash, it's actually my heart that's the problem. It's not that I didn't know. Everybody acts like, oh, if I just know the secrets, uh, I'll be set. Nope. There were people who even saw Jesus and in the flesh and didn't believe. It's profound. Saw miracles, but didn't believe. And that is so profound to me because I self-reflected when I heard that statement and I realized with the deepest areas of my life, that I wanted to grow in that I hadn't seen either instant growth or a couple year in growth, I ran away. And I actually picked up something that I was good at instantly to falsely gratify myself to into thinking that I'm still growing with my goals when really I was just taking a different route altogether and I was not accomplishing anything other than just something else. I took this deep desire of mine and my goals and I set them on the shelf. When it got too painful, I ran away. 
when I was confronted with certain truths where I realized in that moment it takes patience, it takes time, and it takes discipline, certain things in my life I ran. I bring this illustration to you guys of this plant. Look at this plant. This is amazing. This plant, when I bought it, was only about... Maybe it was like one or two of these little ones right here. Maybe like one or two of these. The rest of it was just soil. Look at this plant now. This plant took me about five months to grow. And every day I just put in the time to think about the plant. Does it have enough water? How is it arranged? Is it getting sunlight? And I did all the details that I wouldn't normally do with a plant because this plant is so huge. What's at stake is this big old plant. This thing I've been, that I bought, that I said I wanted to take care of, its life was on the line. And so the details actually mattered. The daily check-in of this plant mattered. And now look at this, full of life, full of new life. If you can see the plants, uh, all the super bright green ones are newly grown in. They just sprouted. And it's a beautiful thing. And it makes me think about my own life. That in the last five to eight years, I've really tried to own up to the long-term goals that I had that I never accomplished in my teens, never accomplished in my college years, never accomplished as a young adult. And look myself in the mirror and say, are you gonna persevere? Are you at that roadblock where it just takes serious laser focus and sacrifice and daily discipline? Are you willing to do it? And if you're not, it's on you because you know what to do. And now you're without excuse. And I think the same is for a lot of my friends and people I see out in the world. Um, I tell them certain things that they ask for and the truth hurts and rather than rise to the occasion and sacrifice what needs to be sacrificed they cower or they choose to do it their own way and it might never come to fruition or take way longer than needed way longer than necessary and maybe in that moment they're challenged to falsely justify that moment or falsely gratify themselves by just taking a different road and seeing some progress and trying to overwrite the other goal. I want to encourage you guys because we're now eight minutes in and I want to wrap up because what's the conclusion of this? One example, guys, is my house. I'm 34 years old. I just had my 34, my, my 34th birthday. I just bought my first house. Now imagine the discipline, the dedication, the sacrifice and pain of being 34 years old and wanting to, uh, 33 at the time, wanting so deeply to have a home and not getting it because the road that I looked at that it was going to take for me to be able to buy my own house was going to take a lot of sacrifice because there were a lot of things I valued in my family, in the structure of my family, in my leadership in my home, in my spiritual walk, in my fatherhood to my child, into my family's life. And when I examined that and I looked at my finances and where I was, there were just other things that were more important. It was going to be a slower journey. And I had to be willing to really wait and stash into the savings and find additional ways to make income and find ways to make myself productive. And God graced me with some opportunities along the way to just be blessed by people around me to help me in different ways financially. But it took me, let's see, left the house at 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, we're talking like 15 years maybe before I bought my first home, but I bought it and now I couldn't be more happier. 
I have everything I want. I have the space. I have a place for my family. This was the goal. And this is just one goal of many. But I stuck to it and I saw it happen. And if you would have told me 15 years ago, hey, you're not going to buy your first home until 15 years from now, I probably would have cowered. I probably would have said, oh, and I feel like if I would have owned up to myself sooner in life, that I would have actually made more sacrifices because I wouldn't have been focused at looking at other people around me or feeling sorry for myself or just being content with where I was at and accepting a different quality of life. I just humbled myself. This is where I am because of me and because of life and where God has me. I have a choice right now to make sacrifices to get the job done. Some of you guys have goals out there that are going to take a week to accomplish. The bigger goals in life are going to take you months to accomplish, years to accomplish. Shoot, you might have some setbacks so crazy in your mental health, in your spiritual life, or the life circumstance, the cards that you've been dealt, or with family members going on, or schooling, or your career path. You might have some crazy setbacks that just put you so far behind the line, you don't ever foresee a day where it'll come. And it's going to take that daily grind and humility of saying, no matter what, I'm going to die trying to, to conquer this goal and to create the life that, that I would like to see for myself. Or at least die knowing I gave it my best shot. I didn't complain about where I was. I got up and I just put the work in. Even if I never conquered that goal, I did. I worked every day to get to where I wanted to be, and I'm content with that. It's the grind. And so I want to just challenge you guys today as you look at this plant, as you hear my story. And again, the house is just one thing. I believe, you know, all kind of stuff with the quality of your friendships, your physical health, your dietary health. You know, your spiritual standing, your spiritual maturity, your participation in the church, all kind of life goals, the house, the car, the insurance, um, having the type of family structure around you, an extended family structure around you that you can be proud of and being able to pour into other people's lives and serve and bless them and to serve the community, all kind of goals. And it, get real practical with it and write it down. I truly believe that we're in a position where we have more opportunity than ever to just hold ourselves, self, uh, hold ourselves accountable. Now, here's the crazy thing. I'm being super practical and just saying quite simply, hey, look yourself in the mirror, man. Are you being responsible? Are you holding yourself accountable? Do you know the truth, but you're just choosing not to make the sacrifice? And are you really afraid of that pain? Are you really afraid of that sacrifice? Are you one of those guys Gary Vee was talking about where you have plenty of information around you that you know, but you're too busy trying to either figure it all out or falsely gratify yourself as if you're on that trajectory when you're really just super behind by choice, not by circumstance? Is that you? You know, sit down and really reflect on that. Um, we have so much opportunity out there to go and get it. And again, just talking a, a few minutes ago, the kicker here is that I've been super practical. What about the spiritual component? Right? Like, you're connected to the creator of all things. So how much more should you posture and position yourself in humility and and, and be prayerful and say, God, use me. What are the things you would have me do? Help me to do them excellently. Help me to be real with myself. Help me to be enduring, willing to make the sacrifices necessary to put your kingdom first and to just be a man of character, one that busts his butt doesn't waste time, is responsible, is honest, is always growing in knowledge, is always applying the knowledge and not just sitting around. The man and woman of character, the godly man and woman of character. What does that look like for you? Start writing it down and be real with yourself. Do you need to stop looking around for information? Is it time to just stop and just sit down and take what you know and go hard? Most people tend to go harder with the limited resources. 
now we're in the age where you can just literally sit down and educate yourself all day until you die sitting on the couch with your potato chips. I'm prayerful that you guys would be blessed by what I'm saying. I wanted to share the story about my house to just say it didn't matter when I got the house. What mattered is that I owned up to my journey. And when I sat down and estimated the time that it would take based off the values and priorities I had in my life, I was willing to endure no matter how long it took. And not every piece of progress in your life is going to happen Year one's crazy progress. Year two's crazy progress. There might be a, especially if you have big goals. If you have huge goals, don't be surprised year three through five if you haven't met them. Measurable daily steps. Hold yourself accountable to the baby steps and make sure you're constantly moving upward and you'll, you will have your growth spurts in those moments where you'll see incredible progress or seem like you just elevated overnight. I remember going from my apartment to a 21 square foot house felt like a crazy jump, but it, it wasn't like it happened overnight, but it felt like it did. It was just like, Oh man, all of a sudden life upgraded, not just with the house. There were a lot of different things in my life, but it was just like, man, this is what I was working towards. I never lost sight of the goal and I got it done. And it doesn't matter where you are in life. We're not all going to conquer things at the same time. But are you just holding yourself accountable on a daily basis to go hard? Um, do you know the truth? Are you acting in light of that? Go after it, man. I, I, I'm just I'm just venting. You know, I don't think I have the strongest conclusion other than man, get up and, and look yourself in the mirror. Be real with yourself. Stop looking at what everybody else is doing. Own your journey and hold yourself accountable to where you're really at at the heart level and be real with yourself and be willing to deal with the consequences of what's at stake and how you respond to it. I hope that blesses you guys and um, yeah, signing off.